take out the Uyghur uh, Muslims who are fighting alongside ISIS. They don't want them coming back and causing trouble in China. Do you care to comment on that, that China is actually working with Russia to overthrow ISIS? I know China very well, and, Michael, they'll only do it if they're going to get the oil. Remember I said, don't leave the oil. If you're going to leave, take the oil. Remember I said, you know who has the oil now? I mean, I will tell you, ISIS has oil. Everybody has oil. Everybody but us. We spend $2 trillion. We have nothing. But China will only do that if they get the oil. In other words, if China is going in, they're going in. They, they, everything they do is about money. China will go in if they're going to take the oil. So it's all about, uh, obviously, economic um, advancement, as most war is, by the way, about economics. So why is it that every war we are going under Obama, we lose? You talk about economics, trade wars we lose, shooting wars we lose. What is this man doing? Hey, Michael, do you know that in Afghanistan, nobody knew this, very rich in minerals. So while we're fighting in Afghanistan, very mountainous area, on one side of the mountain, China has massive excavators on the other side, and they're taking out all the minerals, and they're not doing any fighting at all. They're taking out all the minerals. I mean, you tell me what is going on. So, look, all of this can be changed so fast, Michael. You would be so happy if I win this thing. You will be so proud of this country, Michael. i tell you what. Well, you know, i got to tell you, Donald, on a personal level, you already make me hopeful. You already make me more proud to be an American. And you've given me something personal that you don't even know. I've worked very hard as an immigrant son to achieve what I have. And as you know, my family has worked very hard. They've achieved a lot. But we've had to hide it under the Democrat socialist machine. We've almost had to apologize for having succeeded, uh, for working so hard. I feel proud of what I've achieved because of you, Donald, because you're willing to stand up and say you're proud of what you've achieved. You make me willing to stand up and say that. Do you know that you've had a positive effect already? Well, that's very nice for you to say that, and you've done an amazing job. And I, I look at your ratings, and I look at you, just you. And, you know, you've been a special guy. You've been amazing, and you've been really nice to me, and I appreciate it. But, you know, I get crowds. We had in Dallas, Texas, in the American Airlines Center, Mark Cuban's place, where the Mavericks play, 20,000 people. In Mobile, Alabama, we had 35,000 people. And, I mean, we filled it up in, like, three, four days. You know, we didn't have, like, two months to fill it up. We had days. Uh, I'm going to Las Vegas. That's going to be packed. Every place I go to, I was in Oklahoma last week on Friday, and we had 20,000 people surrounding the band shell. It was a park. The park was packed. They couldn't even get the people in the park, so they put them on the other side of the band shell. They couldn't even see. There's something going on. People are tired of being ripped off by stupid politicians that don't know what they're doing. So, what, hey, Donald, one, la one last point. I know how busy your schedule is. You may not even know this, but I only found this out a week ago. Do you know that you and I, I don't know whether the publishers have done it on purpose, they have your book coming out on October 27th, which is the exact pub date of my book, Government Zero. We're going to have dueling books, Donald, who are, which are saying basically the same thing. Did you know the publishers have done that? Oh, I didn't know it, but I, I actually saw a note from you, and I think probably mine's going to be a little bit later than yours, maybe. I hope so, but it might be a little bit later than yours. But mine is just about ready to go, I'd say, over the next... And basically, I'm talking about how to make America great again, you know, which is similar to what probably you're saying. You know, there's not that many ways. In other words, it's not that complicated. It's common sense. It's being smart. It's understanding. It's respect. It's leadership. And we can make this country truly great again. But if it keeps going this way, we're not going to be able to. It's going to be too late. Donald, we need good people. You said it yourself. You need smart people in every government position in order to save the country. You said you'd bring in one of the great negotiators. I loved hearing that because he'd make China finally, they'd finally make China uh, pay their, their fair share. But, you know, we have such corruption right now in science itself that there's virtually almost no real honest science anymore. And the best, best evidence I have for that is the fake global warming research. Almost every study comes out that's warped. It's all corrupt. Again, Donald, I'm going to put it out because I keep saying it because people are hearing it. When you become president, I want you to consider appointing me to the head of the NIH. I will make sure that America has real science and real medicine again in this country because I know the corruption. I know how to clean it up and I know how to make real research work again. I think that's great and I think that frankly... No, I would leave radio for that. Donald, I would take a cut in pay that would be astronomical but I would do it for this country. You could pay me a dollar a year and I would do it just to make sure we have real science and medicine. Well, you know, you'd get common sense if that were the case, that I can tell you, because I hear so yes. much about the NIH and it's terrible.
beyond belief. Donald, I wish you great luck. Thank you for being with us, and I hope that I see you before Christmas at Mar-a-Lago. Very good. I hope so, Michael. And keep up the good work, and I will see you, and we will keep fighting, and we will get this done. We will get it done. Thanks for being with us on the Savage Nation. Well, you heard it from the man himself, Donald Trump. If you get a comment, the phone number is 855 I don't mince words. I generally do not uh, support candidates. I really have rarely ever supported a candidate in my 21 years on radio. I've avoided it. Uh, I am openly supporting Donald Trump for two reasons. One, I believe he can win. Two, I believe he can save America. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Oh, I Trump is a native son. Do you understand that? I mean, think very carefully. The left has so poisoned you about successful people that your immediate instinct is you don't trust people who are successful. You assume they're all crooks. But what I found in my life is that most successful people are the most honest people I ever met. And I'm speaking from real experience. I know a few billionaires. They've never taken a nickel from anyone. They've created massive amounts of jobs and opportunities for others. And I think that goes for Donald Trump. And I'll say something else. Uh, I don't know him that well. I've met him a few times. I told you in Florida. He's always been very respectful. And the few interchanges I've had have told me what kind of man he is. And I can pretty much tell you that we all judge people in a nanosecond. We pretty much do at a certain stage of our life. We make decisions pretty quickly. I have a neuropsychiatric friend who tells me we look at somebody eye to eye, and within nanoseconds we make a decision about them based upon millions of pieces of data that come into our brain. But putting that aside, here's a question for you, the audience. Did you hear something new from Donald Trump during the interview that is not just the same old, same old? Many people say, ah, oh, Trump was on Savage, big deal. They talked about trade, ISIS, and, uh, and Putin, but nothing new, wrong. You're wrong. There was a lot new in that, in, in that interview, if you listen very carefully. But you have to really listen carefully to what went on. Now, first of all, he and I have a chemistry, which you can tell. It's a strange phenomenon, but we grew up, I would say, within earshot of each other in Queens, New York. But I was on the other side of the tracks. He lived in the rich guy section on the other side of Union Turnpike in Jamaica States, which had beautiful homes. And I lived in the attached row houses on the other side of uh, Union Turnpike. Nothing wrong with it. They were clean. They were immaculate. Everyone took care of their gardens. It was as clean as you can imagine. Uh, and I would say that we speak the same language. We think very, very similarly. He went to private schools. I went to public schools. But you can hear when he and I talk that there's a some there's something of a mutual understanding. And I would say even if I can take that that leap, I think there's a mutual respect between the two of us. And I think that that's very important for you to understand because I'm not ashamed to tell you I come from an immigrant family. He doesn't. I came from an immigrant family, and he's proud of the fact, I'm sure he is, he knows what I've achieved. He also knows what my family has achieved through brains and hard work. And we don't quit, we don't give up. And what I'm saying to you is that could be you too. That could be the new America all over again where there is opportunity for people in this country. Instead of being ashamed of working hard, instead of being ashamed of achieving success, maybe you can be proud of it again. Anyway, those, those are some of my thoughts. If you care to join the conversation, the phone number is 855-47282. Maybe you didn't know this, but on October 27th, which is only a few weeks from now, my book, Government Zero, will hit the bookstores, and my publisher has bought all of the front uh, of store bookshelves. I mean, you're going to see that book whether you want to see it or not. Now, Donald's book is scheduled to come out, I thought, the same day. Now I learned today it's been pushed a week maybe maybe they realize it's not a good idea maybe it wasn't on purpose join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE savage warning the savage nation contains adult language adult content Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is uh, our number three of uh, The Savage Nation. Now, I'm not going to coast on the coattails of the Trump interview, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit. A couple of reasons. One, because I thought it was the best of the three or four interviews that he has granted me. And I, I will say grant me. Let me tell you something. Although he is everywhere, if you think it's easy to get him on your show, uh, guess again. Not easy to get him on, his show, on your show. That's number one. And number two, I had to work pretty hard to get him this time because he hired a new, I think, a new set of uh, advisors. They probably told him to steer clear of me. I don't know what they told him. And I know this. I know that he reads every one of his emails because he even alluded to it. He said, I saw your emails. Remember that? When I, I, you know, I know how to reach him through emails. He reads his emails and he generally responds to his emails, which is more than I could say for virtually any Republican I have ever encountered or tried to encounter in my entire life in radio. I don't even apply this to the Democrats because they're untouchable. They are like the Frank Nitty character in The Untouchables. They are The Untouchables because they run a criminal enterprise and no one can ever reach them, period, end of story. So having said that, I mean, Donald and I talked about three topics and we did break new ground. And I'm going to ask you, if you listen to the interview, did you hear something that you haven't heard on Fox News or on MSNBC or in any of his speeches? Because I did. Many people say, hey, just to get another interview, we've heard it, you know, same old, same old. It wasn't. What did you hear between Donald and I that was unique and original to this show? I'll ask you to tell me. I want to see how sharp people are. And by the way, anybody who gets on the show this hour will get an, a complimentary gift from Michael Savage of a fresh copy of the first edition of Government Zero, which will be out in only a, a few weeks. Let's take some calls on the Savage Nation heard on over 260 stations across America from San Francisco to Washington DC. Let's start on WABC. And, Hello. Uh, yeah, no please don't ask me how I'm doing. What's your comment? Okay, what I'd like to ask you uh to comment on is recently on a talk show I it was said that and it was uh, taken for granted that Donald Trump will not win. And I'm just curious what your thoughts are, why they were so positive that it's like a, a definite, well, he won't win, but he's, he's you know, he's just there for entertainment. And Well, I'm, because they don't want him to win, because they're sold, they're, they're sold lock, stock, and barrel to the government media complex, which is Democrat, 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 Socialist, Democrat, Socialist. That's all their vision for the world is a disaster for America. So naturally, they don't want him to win. He came out of nowhere. They thought he was a joke. They put him down, and many of the people who put him down in the beginning are suddenly speaking of him in glowing terms all of a sudden. Right in the beginning, oh, all of the geniuses, George Will, all these fake right-wingers, fake conservatives, oh, Trump is this, Trump is that. I can list them on my, on my two hands who they were. They're not whistling the same tune anymore. He's a very serious candidate. I hope he's in it for the long haul, and I believe he can win. Wh who's going to beat him? Ben Carson? Rubio the Stooge? Who's going to beat him? Common sense. He has a lot of common sense, and that's why people relate to him, because he's a straight shooter, and he speaks... Yeah, you see the question... Listen to me. I threw questions at him. Did you hear him reading through notes? No. Did you hear him asking an advisor with something in his ear to tell him what to say? No. He uses common sense, and he answers you. Right. I agree. All right, you get a copy of Government Zero. I hope I answered your question. The first hour... I talked about survival of the fittest, and I said that this has not really changed since Darwin first articulated this concept, except now we have national suicide, because we are in a nation where the government itself is promoting weakness and flooding us with immigrants who will never integrate into the United States of America. And I talked about how can our nation survive. And I talked about liberalism is not really a mental illness. It's more like a retrovirus. It's more like AIDS than it is like anything else. I also talked about Biden. I talked about the fact that Arabic is the fastest growing language in the U.S. because Obama has flooded us with Middle Easterners. I talked about the vermin in ISIS and how they're raping their way across the Middle East 
creating a baby boom. I then told you never give up, give up your weapons. It's the only reason ISIS